Hello and welcome to another video um, and in view of the update of the wiki page uh, for the uh, 5e items and uh, treasure parcels uh, I thought uh, I could do a video or two um, showing you all about items and uh, treasure parcels uh, and we'll also look at the forge as well. I don't know if I'll manage to squeeze everything into one video, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're talking about items. Uh, so under campaign here, we're just going to open up the items window. And this will give us a list of items which are currently available in this campaign at the moment. Uh, what you see here will obviously depend on what modules that you have open. Um, and you can see here we've got the Dungeon Master Guide and the Player's Handbook, and I've also got a couple of other modules uh, open as well. But let's have a look at uh, this window first of all, and we'll start up here with the uh, group. Um, you can see that it's currently set to all, and there's a drop down here, and if we click on this drop down, it'll show us the modules that we have uh, open in the uh, in this uh, campaign. Um, so if we wanted to only see the items which were in the player's handbook then we just select player's handbook and now our list is uh, only showing us the items which are in the player's handbook. Uh, similarly if we wanted to see what was in the uh, Spelljammer Astral Adventures guide um, then uh, that would uh, just then show us it would filter out everything else and just show us what's in that particular module. Now you aren't restricted to uh, just these uh, groups. If we click on the drop down again, you can see that there's these two buttons here. This one will edit the groups and this one here will add a category. If we click on the add category um, and scroll down a bit, you'll see that a new group has been added in and the default name being group one. Uh, you can change this by going into the edit groups button and then just uh, changing the text here to uh, whatever uh, you want. Uh, once you're finished, you can just uh, close the uh, edit uh, or the edit button, and then you've got uh, a group which, of course, has uh, nothing in it. Um, so this is an easy way for you to be able to organise your uh, own items that you have uh, created for your campaign. Now, if you've got the, let's say, we've got the Lost Mine of Fandelver uh, in our uh, list here. If we wanted to uh, move an item from uh, the Lost Mine of Fandelva group into my group, then we can just simply drag and drop the item into my group. Uh, maybe we want this one in as well. And then we change to my group. We can see that these two items uh, have now been uh, put into this group and they have been moved out of the Lost Mine of Fandelva group. Uh, we can uh, move them back in there if we want. And we can also just simply get rid of this group if uh, we don't want it anymore. So when you're creating items, then I would suggest that you set up your own group and create items in that group because whatever group is open at the top here is where the item will be created. Um, the other method of dealing with it is to go into the uncategorized and then create your items there and then you can move them into a group uh, after that if you wanted to. Uh, okay, let's set this back to all and let's have a look at the uh, buttons up at the top here. We're going to leave templates for the moment, um, but let's look at armor, weapons and gear. So if we click on armor, then as you might expect, what this does is it filters out all the armor items which are in all of the books that we have open in the campaign. And once again, in the group uh, here, we've got this uh, group drop down. And so we can uh, decide to only view the items uh, for armor that are in the player's handbook uh, or in the Lost Mine of Fandelver or whatever. Um, on the uh, left hand side uh, of uh, the uh, item, there is this uh, link which you can click and that will open up a description of the item. Um, and along the side here for each of the items, it gives you uh, a summary of the, the cost, armor class, etc. for each armor uh, item. And it's a similar thing for uh, weapons. If we go into the weapons uh, category, uh, then it just simply filters out all the weapons. And again, uh, we can uh, uh, so we can filter this out by whichever books that we have uh, open. So if we wanted to just see the weapons that were in the Astral Adventures guide, then uh, we can do so using the uh, drop down. And again, uh, we have got the icon which will open up uh, more information and we've got various bits and pieces of summary information uh, across the, uh, the uh, in, against each line. 
Uh, and finally, we've got gear. And again, this is uh, just a filter out that filters out everything that is just uh, gear. Most of these will be uh, categorized as adventuring gear, but they are subcategorized in this uh, menu here into various things. You can see ammunition, arcane focus, druidic focus, etc. And once again, uh, we have got the ability to just filter out by uh, the, by the uh, module that you've got open. Uh, again, we've got the uh, button here, which we can, or the link, which we can uh, click on to open it up, get more information, and we've got a summary of the, the details uh, along here as well. So back to our items uh, menu here, or our items list. Uh, down here at the bottom, this obviously is the uh, summary of the items. This is the list of items. I don't really need to say that. One thing, though, if you just want, you can actually set the group here. If we just wanted to see items from the Dungeon Master's Guide, you can uh, click on any of these uh, items here. If we wanted to see the player's handbook, then clicking on the uh, book or the uh, list item here down the right will uh, automatically put that into the group and filter it for you. Um, down here, uh, we've got the page. Now, all of these, the, the this here is a page. It's, I think it's 50 items to each page. This is for performance issues so that we Fantasy Grounds isn't dealing with huge lists. Um, and just like you, you can see in many other applications, uh, clicking on the next page button will take you to the next page. Uh, we've got the last page and then when available, we've got the uh, first page and previous pages as well. Uh, below that, we've got the search bar, so we can just type in something in here and then press return. So if we wanted to find all the swords, then it's going to filter that out and show us all the swords. And you've still got the uh, option here to uh, simply uh, limit the number, the, the, what you're looking at to uh, any particular uh, book that you've got uh, open. Uh, we can uh, clear that out and that will uh, clear the filter and we're now seeing everything again. Uh, this button here uh, is all. It says filter by sharing mode. If we click it at the moment, we can see that there is nothing shared. But if we were to uh, share a particular uh, item or two, uh, by right clicking or dragging, um, then uh, you can see this little symbol has appeared next to the icon showing that it's shared. Um, but in a long list like this, it might not be obvious. So you can click the all button and it will just simply filter out everything uh, that is uh, currently being shared. Um, clicking it again will take us back to all and you can unshare items by just uh, clicking on this item here or this little symbol here which uh, will either be a P or an S depending on uh, how uh, the item was actually shared. Uh, and below that we've got three more filters and so you can uh, filter right down to a uh, particular items that you want. So say, for example, you wanted to uh, find a magic item uh, that required attunement that was a uh, rare and that was uh, a potion, uh, none. Uh, so let's go with ring. Um, and this will now filter out uh, all the items which have uh, got attunement um, that are rare and uh, that are rings. And we can see the list from here. And again, uh, if we go to the group here, we can filter out just the ones from the Dungeon Master's Guide or if there's any in Lost Mine or uh, anywhere else, uh, there aren't any. So um, that's fine. We'll just go back to uh, all and it shows you uh, all. Actually, there is one from Lost Mine and Van Delver. There it is. Um, okay, so uh, that is the general window for the uh, items and all the various exciting things you can do with it. Uh, so let's uh, move on now to creating an actual item. Um, so let's say uh, get rid of all these filters. We can just click on the drop downs here and uh, select the uh, blank line and we'll get everything back and we'll go back up into our uncategorized uh, menu. So we've got uh, everything is uh, blank. Um, now, one easy way to uh, create a new item or, or I should really say, first of all, 
um, how we would maybe edit a, an item rather than creating a new one. Um, if we have a look at the player's handbook here, and let's say have a look at the abacus, if we open it up, we can see that there's this little read-only uh, lock icon here, which means that the item uh, can't be edited. There's no way that we can edit that. So if you wanted to edit something, then what you would do would be to make a copy first. So we're going to just drag the link icon, and we're going to drop that back down into the list, and you'll see now we've got an abacus uh, copy. And if we then open that up, we can see the lock icon has turned to black. So we can then unlock that icon and then we can uh, change any of the text that we uh, want to in here. So if you want to edit something which is locked, then make a copy of it first and then you can edit the copy. Um, this uh, saves uh, any uh, changes, that does cha global changes to items that you might not want to uh, change. Another little thing worth mentioning, if we go to the Lost Mine here and uh, let's say uh, open up this battle axe, then we can see that this battle axe uh, uh, the, is not a, a lock, uh, not locked, it's not protected. This is because this is in an adventure module rather than a reference module. Um, so we can uh, just open this up and we have got an already unlocked copy and so we can just edit this directly. So let's supposing we wanted to make this a bit heavier and change the 4 to a 5, uh, lock it up again uh, and close it out. And you'll see now that in this line here, this little symbol here has changed from a book to a book and pen icon. You can see all the other ones are showing as a book icon. This one's showing as a book and pen, which means that it has been edited. Um, we can get rid of this edit if we want to, too, by right-clicking over the battle axe and then going to revert changes. And when we do that, the book and pen icon disappears. And if we open up our battle axe again, we can see that the weight is back down to a uh, four. So that's how you can uh, sh that's how you can tell if something has been edited by just looking at these little symbols down the right hand side. Okay, now let's go on to uh, creating an item. So let's go to the uncategorized. So we've got nothing here, uh, and then these are the two editing uh, symbols here: the add item and the edit list button. Uh, so to create an item, uh, we can uh, either right-click here and go to create item, or just uh, click on the green plus button, and we get the uh, item uh, sheet ready for filling it in. So obviously up here, um, the first uh, field is uh, the name. So we just simply need to type in whatever name we want. We then have these two boxes here, non-ID name and notes. Um, the non-ID name uh, and the notes will be shown to the players if this item is unidentified. The moment, at the moment this item is identified, the, uh, we've got a green ID symbol up here. If we click on that, we can make this item not identified, which means that the players haven't been able to identify the item. And when the item is unidentified like this, then the players are going to see the non-ID name uh, and the notes. So this non-ID name, I mean, for example, if this was, I don't know, a long sword of slaying or something like that, then you could put the non-ID name in here as simply long sword. And then you could put in a, a, a piece of text here, which might give a hint that the sword is magical or unusual or whatever, but it's not going to give you any kind of description or details as to exactly what this uh, uh, item actually is. So the non-ID name and notes are used uh, to show the players um, when an item is unidentified. Uh, when it's identified, this non-ID name and notes don't appear uh, to the players at all. Underneath that, we've got the uh, type. Uh, now, most of the time, we'll be putting in something like this adventuring gear, but you can type anything in that you like. It doesn't really matter too much, but if you stick to the sort of uh, the player's handbook, sort of standard uh, nomenclature, then everything will get filtered uh, in the filters that we uh, showed you earlier on in the video. Um, now, there are certain things that we can type in here, but we'll reserve that for another uh, video. Um, these things will change the way that this uh, uh, dialogue uh, works. But anyway, let's leave this as adventuring gear just now. And the subtype, uh, again, the subtype is anything that you want. 
and the subtype is what will appear here. So, for example, we've got uh, ammunition, we've got uh, arcane focus, etc. And you can see actually now in this here, we've got a blank line here. And this is because we've got an open uh, uh, item. So if we just uh, put in, I don't know, let's say put in test, um, then that's going to be used by this uh, gear uh, filter here. Um, if we can find it in this list, um, it's probably right at the bottom, isn't it? Uh, so there it is there. So you can see that if you put this in as a subtype, uh, then it's going to uh, add this to the uh, standard sort of uh, gear items. Um, so you can create your own subtype lists uh, if you wanted to in the gear items by uh, putting something in here. Um, the rarity, uh, the next box, um, that's a st st standard, it's common, uncommon, rare, very rare and legendary. Um, and uh, that is pretty standard from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Usually only applies to uh, magical items, but could of course apply to anything. Um, but you can leave uh, this blank and you can also leave the subtype blank as well. In fact, you can pretty much leave any of this blank. It doesn't really uh, matter except that if you want to uh, make sure that it filters. Uh, the cost in here, then, uh, usually this goes in uh, with whatever costs that you're using for your campaign. If you're using the standard uh, uh, gold pieces, silver pieces, etc., uh, then you just put in a value and follow it uh, by uh, that, or you can uh, lowercase it as well. So it, it doesn't matter, but you just put in the uh, cost uh, and then end it with the actual uh, value of the currency that uh, is being used. Um, this could be silver pieces, of course, electrum pieces, platinum pieces, or whatever. And if you are using, um, or if your dungeon master has set up, um, uh, or if you are the dungeon master, if you've set up different um, uh, currencies for your campaign, then obviously you should uh, add the uh, currency that you're using uh, for the cost of the item. Uh, the weight is always in pounds, um, so uh, you just need to put a figure in here. You don't need to actually put the pounds in. It's always, always, no, Fantasy Grounds knows that this is pounds. It'll also accept uh, fractions, uh, so uh, decimal fractions, that is, so you can have uh, 0 0.1 uh, of a pound. I will get this right yet. Uh, 0 uh, 0.1. Um, and it'll uh, work that out. Uh, this is obviously for uh, encumbrance purposes. Once this item has been uh, put, placed into the character's inventory, then the weight is used uh, to work out encumbrance. Uh, and the final box here is the description. Now, this is a, a, a formatted, this can take formatted text. So we could, for example, have a bold uh, or bold italic. Um, and you can also uh, drag and drop images. Uh, for example, if we uh, wanted an image in here, we can drag and drop an image. And we could also, let's say, we can maybe drag and drop a table in here as well, um, whatever uh, you wanted to do. So uh, all formatted text available. We can uh, actually create tables as well. Uh, we can create lists, etc., etc. Uh, and this is just really a description of the item. So it's text, it's whatever you uh, want. And this text here will not be visible to the players if the item is not identified. So uh, if it's uh, identified, they're going to see this. If it's not identified, they'll see these two these two items here but they won't see this, and they actually won't see much of the rest of it either. Um, okay, um, I think that's probably enough for one video. Uh, in another one, we'll cover uh, some of the other things that you can have as items like weapons, uh, armor, and so on. So uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Cheers for now.